Welcome everybody to the new channel that does not have a name yet at the time of filming this. No names. Today, we are gonna be starting our very first project on this new channel where we do... What do we do? Car stuff, fun stuff, motor swaps, crazy projects, and you know, just having fun in a garage. And this is our first project. This is a snow cat and that's it. Pretty much, we don't really know much about it other than it's got an old motor. It's got some kind of a carbureted like Chrysler industrial bus motor in it. Uh, we're kind of flying by the seat of our pants on this one a little bit. But we do know one thing, that everything is way better with an LS motor. So obviously since we don't know much about it, we kind of got to give it a little walkthrough and sort of see how it operates. It uses obviously big snow type tracks. Um, with two axles on the front or the back that are powering those tracks. Not much in way of really like electronics. There's some gauges in there, but as far as what we're going to do for powering it, a normal alternator should work pretty good to keep everything on and working. If you look under here, you can kind of see how heavy duty this is. Um, we've got a normal aluminum fuel cell sitting right there above the frame. Uh, obviously, the exhaust runs from the front of the, front of the snowcat to the back. Uh, we're using a like a modified leaf spring setup back here. Um, that's a bird's nest. I don't know if that plays into the functionality <laughs> of this or not. But I think it's abandoned though. Yep. There's our, our fuel line is coming out and it looks like the fuel comes out of both sides of the tank. Because obviously a snowcat's going to be going up mountains and down mountains and sideways and stuff. You're going to want to be able to get the fuel wherever you're at. It's using a trans, just a two-wheel drive transmission that comes to, uh, I guess this would be considered somewhat of like a transfer case or a, a mid-differential. Uh, so it's only got the one input shaft that comes in the top that rotates these two bottom shafts that drive the front and rear axles. So realistically is as different and as alien as this seems right now, not really overly complicated. Should be pretty easy to uh, kind of figure out a way to make this work. So what we're gonna do now, just gonna, we're just gonna dig right into this project. We're gonna pull the hood off and kind of see what we're working with under the, uh, or inside the engine bay. Uh, Snowcats don't use a traditional like rack and pinion style obviously because tracks would be almost impossible to move like that So it uses a hydraulic ram and it actually pivots kind of like the way a monster truck pivots So this right here is very uncommon for any type of motor setup really um, As far as like what we've put LS's in and whatnot, but this is the pump that runs the high pressure hydraulic system so this is specific to this setup. So this might be a bit of a challenge to figure out how we're actually gonna take this unit and mount it to the LS motor. Um, everything else, I mean, you can see it's really old and very well used uh, using one of these extremely high horsepower single barrel carbs, letting in all the air and fuel. I bet this thing makes, I would imagine probably about 113 horsepower. That's what, that's what my science says anyway. As far as everything else, it's very, very simple. Uh, we've got our heater core lines here to run the heater inside. The wiring situation here is a little bit dated. It's semi-interesting. You can see someone's made some repairs in the past here, but really we're using like old school relays and flat pin connectors and a bunch of stuff like that. So maybe we'll, we'll use part of this or maybe we won't. I'm not sure yet. Uh, other than that though, it's, essentially a very very basic engine setup so Right there, that's where we had to cut because those bolts are not coming out. We cut it on both sides. 
it should be free. Well, that's the theory anyway. Yeah, we broke this one. Those bolts have never been removed, so the bolt that was holding this front engine mount actually just sheared. It just broke right in half, yeah. There's something else holding that on. And that is how you remove an engine, more or less. There were a few things that we had to cut off to get it out, like that oil pressure, uh, sensor tube, some wiring, but we're not reusing this, so it doesn't matter. We can just clip those off. We also failed to drain the transmission, hence the, the puddle. Now, with the engine removed, you can kind of see what we're working with here. You can see right there that's where the drive line will connect into that transfer case we'll need to come up with some new motor mounts in here we had to cut the exhaust off but that's okay next step will be assembling the new motor and uh, then we can just kind of lift it in here and see what we need to do for the mounts because those will need to be custom made now when i say new engine i use that term loosely yeah. Where did you find that? <laughs> this was actually a boat anchor. See? <laughs> this is a pickup truck 5.3. So this is going to be a cast iron block LS variant. Um, it's a 5.3 liter displacement. And yeah, it's obviously in very used shape. So we're going to go through the motor. We're going to replace some key components on it, clean it up. Um, we've got brand new heads for it, intake manifolds and stuff like that. So we'll slap it together and hopefully have a sweet hot rod. It's hot rod snowcat. Hot rod snowcat. And here's the transmission. Yeah, the weakest, crappiest transmission arguably of all of them. This is a 4L60E that are extremely prone to failures um, under any kind of power or load or any of that. Um, but on a snowcat, we have a theory it's... on the snowcat. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the snowcat's going to be geared so low that we're not actually sure that it's really going to matter a whole lot. Um, so I think that we're going to just try it and see what happens because at this point it's just for science, you know. We're taking our better judgment and we're throwing that out the window, and that's essentially how the whole LS project came to be. I think really is what it <laughs> <laughs> is really what it boils down to. our refurbished LS motor now essentially we just went through it replaced all the gaskets head gaskets head bolts 
Uh, we got our seals in. We've got all new gaskets on here. We've got the rear main seal we did too as well. Because why not? Yeah, well, it's fresh motor now. I mean, gasket wise, the heads were redone. So we took those to the machine shop and had all them gone through and whatnot. We got our really baller 7.6 custom motor pickup plates here. Side note, 7.6 is the name of your racing team. Racing team and shop, yeah. So, But not the channel for some reason. Because we wanted to name the channel something cooler than 7.6. <laughs> I have to bound that in. We didn't get that in. Is that just oh. the front seal? Yeah, we'll finish doing that when we put the uh, um, accessory all the front. On. Yeah, this is where your water pump and everything will go, and then our accessory drive, and then our crank. We're just not sure what we're doing right here yet because of the pump. So in theory, the hydraulic pump on the Snowcat, we're hoping can sit right here. That's going to be a little interesting. I'm not really sure how that's going to work out yet, but she's solid. Everything's good on this motor. We actually, uh, this is a Gen 4 LS motor. Um, and we didn't know that until we started trying to bolt the heads on because the uh, head bolts are actually different lengths between the Gen 3 and the Gen 4 so That was it, but the heads are interchangeable. Between yeah, Gen all, 3 the heads, and 4? all the heads as far as we know will change all between them So if this so this one would have had a rectangle port head and we just put cathedral port stuff on because that's what we We usually only just deal with Gen 3 stuff. So This is our shop assistant Nigel He's not pleased with the crank seal, but Whoops. And uh, that's a wrap on, on this episode. Tune in next time when we put it in a thing. <laughs>